If your passion has gone missing, here are the questions to ask. So Sri C. Suv, claim your feminine here, fresh out of yoga, where I realized that, oh my gosh, I'm so out of shape. <laughs> oh, that was a nice, rude Friday afternoon awakening, that, or Friday evening. But what was so cool was, as I was laying in Shavasana, and, you know, during the time when you're not supposed to think, and uh, this is what downloaded, was to talk tonight about passion, partially because, yes, the Passion Cure is starting next week, Monday, um, and so I will include links to that um, when I'm able to go back in and edit this post. Um, so I hope you'll join me, join me on that journey, and especially if this video is speaking to you at all, definitely come on over. So it's The Passion Cure. You can go to my website, uh, claimyourfeminine.com slash passion, and sign up. Um, and it's a five-day free Facebook challenge, and we're just going to each day um, open up to passion. So the passion's gone missing. And now this is, this can really be in any area, right? So um, I was once asked to, or a couple years ago, I spoke at a women's event. Uh, it was like a day-long conference with multiple speakers and activities and all this stuff. Um, and they asked me to speak on passion. And what was so funny was I came in all ready to talk about how to follow your passion and, you know, da 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 da, -da because that is one of the things that I had done. I left corporate to become a professional belly dancer. I dropped my MBA, mid-MBA, uh, because I was literally leaving class at uh, the U of C to go put on makeup in the bathroom to go get ready for a gig. And I was like, the course is here, like $50 a minute. What, where are your priorities? But they were very clear, right? So anyway, so I came in to that event like, let's talk about following your passion. But I was one of the last speakers. And so I decided to go through and like sort of canvas the crowd and get to know uh, the women that were in attendance and what they, what would really serve them. And what was in hindsight, not surprising, but at, at the time it was like, oh, wow. Um, Many of the women reported, like, follow your passion. Follow your passion. I, I don't even know what my passion is. What passion? Where's my passion is gone. I'm too busy for passion. <laughs> like, like, I have too much going on. Um, too much effort. Not enough time. Not enough energy. Right? Which, by the way, it's totally intertwined. When we allow ourselves more time, when we redefine our relationship with time and with our energy and learn ways to fill up throughout the day, which is part of what I talk about in, your, in the uh, Claim Your Feminine course, that is how we're able to reconnect with that passion. But So it's a really common issue of this disconnect, like this feeling of where where has my passion gone? It could be in your relationship. It could be, um, you know, like you have a loving relationship with your partner, but you're like roommates, you know, you're like ships passing in the night. Or it could be the business that, that was born out of passion and now it's kind of fizzled because that's especially that like rip roaring startup passion is like hard to sustain. Um, and maybe that's become a disconnect. Um, maybe it's just in the sizzle of life, right? And just how we show up. So these are, this is where you want to start looking. And if you would like to do this together, this is where we're going to go next week. I, what I will be teaching are our tools for connecting with your passion through the body. Yeah, we're just going to bypass the brain because she's like talked you out of this in the first place, okay? She's talked you out of your passion and rationalized you right into this place of, God, we're Carter. I'm not doing enough. 
I'm not enough, I'm not worthy, blah, 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 all those stories, right? Um, we're going to bypass the brain and we're going to go right to, uh, right to the body. So that's the passion cure next week. So I invite you to join that again, claim your feminine.com slash passion, right? Free five, five day Facebook challenge. Hey, Ramona, welcome. Welcome. So I'm glancing down at my notes because like I said, I just sort of downloaded in Shavasana, like what is the deal with passion and losing our passion and oh, this is what, what came through. So if the passion is gone, there's a disconnect. So where is that disconnect? Um, it, it can ap express in the body in like, where are we holding back, right? So even in the way that we hold our jaw, the set of our mouth, uh, like how we hold our eyes, like how relaxed or tense we are, that's a holding, right? And it's kind of like what I was talking about with a, a, a woman on the phone today, like there's the difference between boundaries, which come from love, and walls, which come from fear, grief, anger, right? So one of the first questions to ask is where are you holding back? And sometimes that takes having someone like me, who is an expert at women's bodies and body language. I mean, I've danced, I danced with women for 10 years and um, became, realized that I had a gift for seeing where is she holding? Where in her story did she shut something down? You know, it could have been that, uh, I, I often joke, but it's really true. Quite often I'm working with recovering teenage girls so which of us were teenage girls, right? It's like, so in some adolescent moment, um, someone made a comment about your developing bosom, or maybe you were t very, very tall. And so you learned how to hunch your shoulders. Well, that becomes a habit. Then that gets carried forward into womanhood and then starts defining and tell pe telling people and putting up those walls, right? Um, so for example, right? So this is one of, one of the areas, one of the places where we'll explore. It'll be super easy. Um, it'll be a daily lesson to just sort of apply and just little like ninja body tricks and an, an, an introduction to the claim your feminine way <laughs> of just to say like, you know, what what is the transformation that can happen when we start to allow the wisdom of our bodies to lead the way? It's profound. So that's your first question is where am I holding back? And that's, that's a tough question in and of itself, right? So you can, we'll, we'll look at it in the body next week, but between now and then one, go join the passion cure, claim your feminine.com slash passion Two, take out your journal tonight. Where am I holding back? You can even check in. Where in my body am I holding back? Ooh, that gets really luscious. And then bring that. And we'll talk about it next week. The next question to ask. And so, like, holding back can come from fear. Um, the disconnect. So this is going to get deep really fast. Because our passion is our vibrancy. Yeah. Like, that's what I'm talking about. Passion is like living life to the fullest. Living, like, like that, like the song, the Beyonce song, like, I was here. You know, like, you get, you want to get to the end of your life and be like, I lived every day, right? That's, that's what we're going for. That's passion. So, being disconnected from our passion is not a, it's not a casual thing. It's not a, oh, yeah, it would be nice if. No, this is, this is, we're talking not just, not just the health of your relationship, your business, your body. It's also about what is the legacy that I'm leaving behind, right? So it's huge. This is not like little stuff. So the other question that I will ask, and then I'm just going to leave it at that because, um, because we're already pretty heavy for a Friday night, <laughs> is that disconnect. So disconnect, I'm just going to get real with you. If there is a disconnect, 
behind the disconnect is often shame. I'm going to say that again because like when I talk about body shame, shame about ourselves, that's an internalized something. It's where we've experienced a trauma and we have internalized responsibility for that trauma. Now, we can talk about personal responsibility in another video, but there's a difference between saying I am responsible and there's a, and saying this happened to me because there was something wrong with me, which is simply never true, but it's very often a product of trauma. And I also want to say here that trauma is in the eye of the beholder. Okay. I was just having this conversation with my beautiful, wise soul of a daughter and a 15 year old body. And, you know, she was talking about having had a conversation where, you know, the term PTSD really came out of, um, post battlefield trauma. You know, we started to become aware of it. That's when it really like entered the psychology field. And what we came to know is that PTSD happens, post-traumatic post stress syndrome is what I'm talking about. Is it PTSD? Post-traumatic syndrome. Okay, maybe I'm saying that wrong. But anyway, <laughs> um, post-traumatic stress is what I'm talking about. Oh, D is for disorder. Um, is, can happen, like one person's trauma is another person's hanged nail. Does that make sense? Like, so there is no comparison here. Um, I can't tell you how many women have come to me with heartbreaking stories and then they go, oh, but I know, you know, I know that there are people who've had it, who have it much harder, who have had it much harder. And yes, that may be true. And trauma is in the eye of the beholder. It may not, a trauma can come from a careless word that someone said to you and that just inserted itself and got itself under your skin. Um, and then it just sort of festers there and, and certain beliefs around yourself like grow around that and then that turns into shame, which then turns into this feeling of disconnect. Because we don't often go around feeling, I feel shame, right? It's so deep and buried that it just feels like nothing. It just feels like disconnect. So the second question is, where is the disconnect? And then what is behind the disconnect? And, um, of course, there are different levels to this conversation. And depending on that level of trauma, maybe it's a conversation to have with a therapist. Maybe it's a conversation to have with a coach. You know, maybe it's a conversation to have with a women's empowerment coach like myself. Um, but the bottom line is that shame is a passion killer. I mean, it just takes passion off the table, like, blam. And because it feels like disconnect, it doesn't feel like there's anything wrong. It's kind of like, imagine, like, a, a, an, a numbness. Um, so imagine, because, like, okay, so, like, our, uh, you know, and we're like, oh, something's wrong because we feel pain. But what if the pain is so long buried or has been so internalized and turned upon ourselves because of our own story and because of the collective story that can often say, blame the victim, for example. We talked about this in my video last night. Um, yeah, so that's the other question, right? Ooh, my gosh. So, some journaling to do? <laughs> but what I can say is, yes, there is a pathway back to the passion. No, it doesn't necessarily have to take years of therapy. And I'm not knocking therapy. I think therapy is awesome. Having been through years of therapy myself. Yeah. Um, there are ways that we can tap into our own natural resources. The wisdom and knowledge of the body. Your loyal consort who has been with you from your first breath and she will be with you until your last breath. She remembers everything, the good, the bad, and everything in between. And when we start to let her guide us, when we start to tune in and say, what is she telling us? Like, why do I keep wanting to stuff 
you know, 10 Snickers bars down my throat and, you know, like what, what is she really trying to tell me right now? So here are the questions, right? If the passion has left the building, no matter what arena, right? Um, where am I holding back? What am I hiding? Where is the disconnect? And what I would play with is, one, come join my passion cure, because we're going to go body, we're going to go wise, we're going to go into this, but in a really fun, like easy way. I'm all about easy, easy strategies to bypass the brain who's so smart and she will talk us out of anything, right? That's her job. She protects you. Yeah. Or she may be masculine, right? Doesn't it might. Yeah. But, um, that's her job is to protect you and to keep you safe by saying no change, no change for you. Right. But our heart, our soul wants to transform, especially if passion has left the building. That is a big signal that there is something amiss, right? Because that is our natural state. Yeah. Our natural state is vibrant. Our natural state is joyous. Our natural state is sensual, like enjoyment of every moment, right? Even the crappy moments, because it's not like all the moments are golden, right? <laughs> so reconnecting with that passion, sign up for my passion cure next week, claimyourfeminine.com slash passion. And I'll add the link when I can and, um, ask these questions. Where has your passion gone? What am I hiding? Where am I holding back? Where is the disconnect? And it could just be sitting down with your journal, quietly meditating, which is just breathing and like focusing on the breath. Yeah. Just chilling out. Like where, where are these things? And then journal about it and see what comes out. So that is it. Hey, Alexi, I'm just wrapping up my love. Um, these are the questions to ask yourself um, if passion has left the building. And if passion has left the building, I got a solution for you. So come on over. It's a free five-day Facebook challenge. We are going to have so much freaking fun. And we're going to go deep and we'll go wide. Yeah, catch the replay, girl. It's good. It's good. This is totally like, like a Shavasana download. <laughs> good stuff. Like great stuff happens when we meditate. Um, claimyourfeminine.com slash passion. Sign up and I will see you next week in the room. We're going to have like, we already have a kick-ass Facebook group going and um, the, the daily uh, just like exercises, fun stuff will be in there. Um, we'll have a big celebration at the end. And uh, mwah, love you too. So with that, have an awesome Friday. If you celebrate, happy Easter. Have a wonderful weekend, and from my heart to yours, I love you. Take what you need and pass it on. Mwah. Bye!